Hello. We both enjoy investing in property and picking up a bargain along the way. But in today's competitive market, it's not always that simple. No, but one way you can definitely stack the odds in your favour is by heading down to your local property auction and buying your home under the hammer. When buying a property auction, there's no messing about. As soon as the hammer goes down, you've signed contracts. Yes, and then 28 days later, sometimes less, you will complete. So it's a quick process. But what inspired the buyers on today's show? Well, the properties are anything but standard, starting in Felixstowe. Now, that's an odd ceiling, and that's because this is a non-standard construction house. There could be an unusual development for this bungalow in Willenhall. So what are your plans for this, then? We represent a, a care company. We're looking for community-based accommodation. And there's a surprising feature in this flat in Liverpool. This, however, is all a bit strange. This is a kind of pod they've created in the middle. Why would you do that? All these properties have been sold at auction, and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. Congratulations. First today to the Suffolk coastal town of Felixstowe, home to the largest container port in the UK, and Tommy's nearby to see if it also contains some decent auction lots. I'm in this residential area of Felixstowe, and this here is today's auction lot. It's a three-bedroom semi, and it had a guide price of 120 to 140,000 pounds. Well, there's lots of off-street parking to the front, which is always a good start, and the actual building looks in good shape from the outside. So why don't we take a look inside and see what you're going to get for your money? Nice and open, staircase going up to the first floor. And interestingly, and this has confirmed it, a lot of stripping out's already been done. So there's been a bit of work done on here, and obviously someone's rewiring it, chasing the cables in the wall. Big triple window there brings lots of natural light in. Yeah, this could be a real nice, comfy, cosy room in the depths of winter with a fire going, you know? And then that leads into this room, which would be a nice kitchen diner. Now, that's an odd ceiling, I hear you say. And that's because this is a non-standard construction house. The good thing about that is it's a, a nice, bright, comfortable, fast house. So it's very quick to build. The downside is it's not always easy to get a mortgage. So these quite often go to preferable cash buyers. But they're really good houses. Going through what we got here. Ah, now this is an add-on. This is the original wall of the house that comes to an end there, and these were outhouses because they're all single brick. So none of these, unless you put a lot of effort into it by putting timber framing around with insulation and plasterboard on to bring them up to standard to get a higher EPC rating, they have to stay outside. So when they're outside of the main building, they don't come under the same planning regulations. The low EPC, or Energy Performance Certificate, rating of this single brick extension means it's too energy inefficient to be considered part of the inside of the building. But although it's not much use in its current state, the potential is there to add to the ground floor footprint. As Tommy said, this house is of non-standard construction. It's a steel frame instead of your traditional bricks and mortar. As well as being tricky to mortgage, they can also be more expensive to renovate due to their specialist nature. So you do your research and know what you're buying before you bid. Well, this is a nice big landing and everything running off of it. 
And this is obviously where the family bathroom's going to go, nice size. This is the smallest of the three bedrooms, I presume, but it's still a small double room, so that's good. This is a good size double bedroom. And the third one is the master bedroom. This is a good size. This is what I like, spacious, airy, and easy to work on. This could turn out to be a cracking family home. Tommy sounds sold on this place, and you can see why. It's a brilliant blank canvas to work from, and if that wasn't enough, there's a ton of outside space. Now, this is what I call a garden. Look at the size of this. It's a massive garden, and you've got a massive front garden, so you've got great outside space. So, do you want to extend the house? Well, if you need to, you could take these outbuildings down, because they, they won't comply with building regs because it's only a single brick. And one of the big bonuses about this property is that's a community park field at the back. So it's probably very unlikely that's ever going to be built on. So you'll always have a fabulous outlook from the building. But what will a local estate agent's outlook be on this three-bed semi? that was guided at 120 to 140,000. We've invited one along to find out. So first impressions of this property is that the space is large and looking into the garden, backing onto the playing fields, you've got great space to extend. And the potential here is absolutely fantastic and it's just gonna be a perfect family home. With this property being of non-standard construction, what would be the main concerns here? So this could cause issues trying to get lending onto the property. Because it's not your traditional bricks and mortar, um, some lenders are a bit weary of lending against it as such, which could uh, cause issues uh, trying to resell on. With all that in mind, how much does he think this property could be worth once renovated? Depending on the spec of the property, once this is fully renovated, I believe this would be on the open market between £210,000 and £220,000. And what potential rental income could be made here? If this was there to come to the rental market, I believe this would uh, rent out anywhere between £850 per calendar month to £900 per calendar month. This is a good-sized property on a generous plot. And what's really good about it is a lot of the building work has already been done. However, whoever purchased this property is going to need deep pockets because for this property to realise its full potential, it ain't going to come cheap. So let's see you fancy taking on the challenge when it went under the hammer. This lot was part of a remote auction with bids taking place online. Congratulations, well done. Winning bidder who bagged the lot for 120,000, bang on the lower guide price was country music loving couple Elaine and Brian. Elaine two stepped along to fill Tommy in with their plans. Well, Elaine, can I give you my congratulations on your acquisition? Thank you. This is a substantial property you've got here. Yep, we're very happy with it. <laughs> so... What was it about this particular house that attracted you? The size of the property in the first place, and obviously the price, um, fitted our budget uh, very nicely, gave us the opportunity to do something and to buy in this area because I couldn't have afforded to otherwise. You said we, but you didn't elaborate on that. Who's the we? The we is myself and my partner, Brian. And is Brian a builder? No, he's not. No, he's, um, he's actually uh, retired um, from his regular work, but he's um, a singer and on the road quite a bit. A so, singer? Yes, Oh, yes. a professional singer? Yes, yeah, he's a, a country singer and very good one. Oh, what fascinating that is. <laughs> I like a bit of country and western myself, actually. Yeah, I do, my favourite. And is this the first time you've ever bought at auction? It is, yes. I have bought uh, properties before, but never at auction. And what, um, to renovate them or...? No, no, no. Um, they were already in pretty good state and just put my own taste to it at a later stage. What, what made you pick this particular area? Brian's family are this way. Mine are in Kent. Um, well, one's in America as well. But uh, this was a nice location by the coast, it, and it just appealed to us. We were looking Norfolk, Suffolk, 
um, anywhere within this location. We couldn't find anything on the regular market that I could afford. And this one came up on an auction site that Brian took a peek at. And we came to see it, looked from the outside, spoke to a couple of neighbours about the properties. And then we had an arrangement to come back and view it with the agent from the auction room. And um, came in and said, this is it. This is the one. We, we just want to go for it. Were you aware at the time that this was a non-standard construction? Yes. Right, so yes. you were aware from that. But that yeah. didn't deter you in any way? No. No, it didn't frighten no. me, having watched Homes Under the Hammer so often and seen many of them. I thought, no, it's not necessarily a problem. No, it's not, as long as you're aware of it. Yeah. Not deterred by the house being of non-standard construction, Elaine and Brian are now ready to get stuck in. They're going to make sure the work started by the previous owner has been done correctly before embarking on a top-to-bottom refurb. Outside, they'll get the single brick extension up to habitable standards and use it as a downstairs shower room, office and extra storage. They're also going to look into creating a space for a garage or carport. With a decent budget of 50 grand, they're hoping to get finished in nine months. And all these changes that you're going to make to the house, is this for you then to sell it or to live in it or to no, rent it? No, we've considered all different options, but we are going to live in it. Maybe in the future we might do another project. We don't know yet, so... Right. Um, would you sell this then or would you rent it or what? We may rent it out um, and do another project um, or we may just keep it and just do another one anyway. So we haven't decided yet. It depends uh, how well this one goes and how tired we are at the end of it. Right, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out because, you know, you're quite happy and prepared and I admire you for that, for taking on, a, you know, what would mm. be considered a bit of a, a risky project. Yeah. But I don't think so. It's well constructed. It is. And it gives you everything that you need. Mm. And we're only custodians of these properties for the amount That's of time true. we're here. That's very true. So don't worry too much about it. No. <laughs> Just enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy Get it the way it, you want it. it. Live in it live and in enjoy it. it to the full. Yeah, exactly what we plan to do. Yeah. Well, I hope you succeed and I wish you. you the best of luck. Thank you. Well, Elaine and Brian have bought this property to actually live in themselves. I know they've got big plans for it, but they've got a big budget to match. £50,000 to turn this property around and make it into a fabulous family home. And they've got a very justifiable time scale of around nine months, which is achievable, providing they get cracking. Will they do it? You can find out later in the show. Back now to Willen Hall in the West Midlands and a property Dion saw in November 2017. We have got a bungalow, it's got two bedrooms and a guide price of £50,000 plus positives, bit of front garden, off street parking and a garage. What a start. Yes, this bungalow certainly looked promising on the outside. But would that continue on the inside? Right. You know what? A really spacious hallway when you come in. There's loads of uh, loads of air and light coming in. It hasn't been decorated in a while, I can tell by the floor carpet. Now there's two bedrooms in this bungalow. I'm just trying to figure out which ones are the bedrooms. OK, I'm taking a guess. That is the lounge. That's a bedroom and that's a bedroom. And you know what? They are good-sized bedrooms. They're double bedrooms. Right, that's a strange-looking bathroom. It just isn't working like this. This shower has been put in at a later date. It's taken up all the space as well. Take it all out, start again, get it right. And then into your kitchen, which feels really small, really small. You've also got a fireplace in your kitchen and you've got this massive chimney stack looking to getting rid of that. So there were options to improve the kitchen. Not only could you remove the back wall and the chimney breast, but with a sunroom off it, you could also have knocked through into that. But despite first impressions being positive, all wasn't quite as it seemed. Now, I know I've said to you, I like this place and it's got loads of potential, but there's a few things 
I haven't shown you. Have a look at that. That is not good. And you know what? That's not the only one. Down here as well, look at this. Look at that. So that is some serious move. There's cracks everywhere in this room. There's more cracks in the corner over here. There's even cracks in the back wall as well. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. It might have something to do with this place. Used to be a mining area, so the cracks could have been caused by that. It just feels like there's a little bit of subsidence. Get it checked out, get it sorted before you do anything. It seemed that the bungalow was broken, but it did sit on a great-sized plot with an enormous garden at the back, which gave an option to build something bigger and better. This bungalow isn't in great condition. It needs a lot of time and money spent on it. It could become a bit of a money pit if you're looking to renovate this place. For me, I'd want to take it back to the very, very foundations, build something new, if planning permitted, and the figures work out. Let's find out who was interested when he went under the hammer. After a slow start, this proved a popular lot, with bids going back and forth between multiple bidders before the hammer fell. We all done. One, two, three. And the triumphant pair who bagged the lot for 126,000 were Ian on the right and Dean. Ian is a finance manager and Dean the maintenance manager for a specialist building company that aimed to change people's lives. Dion caught up with them to find out their plans for the dilapidated bungalow and its decent sized plot. Ian, nice to meet you. And you, Dion. Dean, nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you, Dan. And well done. You've got yourself a project. Absolutely. So what are your plans for this then? So we, we represent a, a care company across the West Midlands uh, who look after young adults with learning difficulties, physical disabilities, Asperger's, autism, that type of thing. So we're looking for community-based accommodation. That is and brilliant. Helping young adults yes, to give them a life. Yeah, yeah, yeah life yeah. opportunity community-based living and it's just trying to empower those people to have uh, fulfilling lives really what are you doing with this then are you extending this or well plan a would be to um completely knock it down and start again flatten it have yeah. a have a blank canvas yeah, yeah. empty plot yes. okay yes. and then yeah. six one bed uh, apartments in a muse style so whether it be an, a, a c shape or an l shape okay just to keep the garden features uh intact plan b is so, yeah, plan B would be to keep the facade on the front and obviously extend to the side and, and out the back to, okay. to create the same kind of... Yeah, take this back, okay. back to shell, really, as, as best we can. Obviously, there's, there's problems here, so we, we really could do with knocking it down. So, plan A, with the six dwellings, if you were to get everything you wanted and you could flatten this place, talk us through the configuration, because I know that would be the front. Yeah. How would it look? So... We'll have to go for planning permission, but the building line of the rest of the street is a few metres further forward. So we oh, so can nudge. Look to consider oh. uh, that forward, which will give us more space to the rear. So two flats at the front, yes. and then a single line behind, leaving the garden areas um, on, on the sort of a muse uh -huh. type, uh -huh. type arrangement. So there's plenty of communal space out there to use. OK, so plan A's budget if you were to get what you wanted and everything was passed and they said, yeah. listen, listen, you two go and do what you want, you're doing a great thing, what's the budget? The budget comes back to the fact that we are really a care company yeah. uh, and the, the business of caring provides the returns that the business needs. So when looking at the property, we don't necessarily need to make a profit. We just need to cover our costs so that the care business itself makes the profit in due course. So we've spent 126 on this and our overall budget for six is 600,000. Okay. So we think we've got plenty of funds within the pot to cover all bases, even on plan A. They thought the build would cost 350 grand, so 600 all in was a good budget. And if that didn't work, there was always plan B. If we have to keep the current building, uh, we won't get six. Yeah. Um, we need a minimum of four to make the project work, which I think is, is achievable yeah. with the replacing the buildings to the rear. Mm. Um, so the budget will come down by a couple of hundred thousand 
uh, based on the number of rooms. Okay. Uh, and we'll have to make good as best we can in the existing building. So tell me what's the difference between building a, uh, or should I say, working on a project for assisted living than just a normal refurb? What have you got to do differently? What have you got to put in? There'll be domestic uh, one bedroom flats, uh, but the spatial requirements mean that we, we try and limit the number of walls. So it'll be a lounge kitchen rather than having a separate kitchen, with, which might um, mean there's, there's the turning space for wheelchairs isn't, okay. isn't there. So oh, we see. try and keep them as open plan as possible. Um, but then it also maintains independence with their own front door. And then we'll have communal areas, uh, staff areas, so that they can break out and uh, get together or have a chat or play games, watch TV together. So th there's a community feel mm. as well as spatial independence. At that stage, Ian thought the planning process would take six months, and regardless of whether it was plan A or plan B, this customised accommodation would be ready in four months after approval. But in the end, three and a half years had ticked by before we went back to check on progress. Yes, the bungalow had definitely gone, but there wasn't anything in its place as yet, and Ian explained why. So we started the process uh, in the normal manner. Uh, we ap approached the, the planning department for a pre-application. We had some feedback there, and they thought that four bedrooms would be a better fit for the site. So working with our architect, we managed to redesign the drawing so that it, it, it fit the planner's wishes, and that went forward then to recommended for approval based on the four bedrooms. So six had become four, and planning wasn't the only issue that had slowed this project down. The site itself had thrown up a number of challenges. Here we had a large tree, a big poplar, and um, we've had a, a lot of work to take this away. Yes, the poorly positioned poplar took almost two weeks to remove, and then... So we found a well in all the undergrowth at the back of the garden. Um, it's reasonably deep, nicely formed, but I don't know what we're going to do with it. And being in an old coal mining area, the site also had to have boreholes drilled to a depth of 45 metres to check there were no issues with the ground. Then all the services they found on site had to be made safe and rerouted. But finally, they were ready to build the approved designs. It will look like a pair of semi detached houses from the front with a single front door, shared gardens at the back with off-street parking to the front. The, the building itself will have some specialist features. The bathrooms will be complete wet rooms. The bedroom space will also have some integral technology so it can talk back to the staff. Front door will be secured with a keypad and also there will be an office and there'll also be a communal TV meeting room at the back of the property too. Ian had then hoped the work would be completed in six to seven months, but with the timescale going way over, there was a knock-on effect with the original budget. So we bought the site for 126,000 three and a half years ago. We thought the budget then for the build was going to be 350. As we're three, three and a half years on, uh, it's more like 440. So with the cost of the site, the finance, the fees, the professional costs, the total project will be will be around 600,000 in order to get the thing built to our satisfaction. So, way over budget and way over time. But this wasn't a project about making huge profits. It was to provide much needed accommodation for four young people looking to move forward with their lives. To make a brand new start. And you can see how it all pans out later in the show. Still to come, this owner's ambitions are as lofty as their property. What was it that you liked about it? Well, I've always loved the building, but the view is fantastic. Mm. 
And we'll find out if Ian and Dean have got the care home off the ground. So the budget has inflated somewhat since we started the project. Time to return to Felixstowe, where Tommy was looking at a three-bed semi with a guide of 120 to 140,000. And there was a bit of a bonus when he looked inside. Interestingly, been a bit of work done on here. Someone's rewiring it, chasing the cables in the wall. Big triple window there brings like a sort of natural light in. Yeah, this could be a real nice, comfy, cosy room. But although someone had started the work, there was a downside to this property. It was non-standard construction, which can make it difficult to get a mortgage. But that didn't put off country music fan Elaine, who bought the property with partner Brian for 120,000. That this was a non-standard construction? Yes. Right, so yes. you were aware from that, but that yeah. didn't deter you in any way? No, no, it didn't frighten me, having watched Homes Under the Hammer so often and seen many of them, I thought, no, it's not necessarily a problem. So with a budget of 50,000, a timescale of nine months and some confidence from watching Homes Under the Hammer, Elaine was determined to turn this into her and Brian's new home. Eight months later, we've returned to see if she's succeeded. I'd say that was a resounding yes. Where once there was an empty shell, Elaine has created the warm and inviting front room Tommy hoped for. Whilst at the rear of the property, there's a stunning spacious kitchen diner with views out onto the back garden. Upstairs, there's a new bathroom and the bedrooms have been entirely redecorated, each given their own colour scheme. There's been an awful lot of work, made all the more difficult by the fact that the house was of non-standard construction. We had the plasterers come through to redo the ceilings and we had the walls done as well. We decided to go the whole hog. That was quite a challenge in itself because of the structure of the building. And they've put in some support work to help those ceilings to be strengthened and will help to stop the movement of the boards. It's worked quite nicely uh, overall. <laughs> but tackling some of the problems that come with buildings of non-standard construction didn't just benefit the structure of the house. There were other bonuses for Elaine. When I applied for insurance for the home, I explained to them that it was a non-standard property. And when I described the property and what had been done to it, they accepted the fact that it was now, in their eyes, a standard property because it had the solid walls. So that obviously was a good thing for me. And it could be a good thing should Elaine come to sell. The insurance company now regarding the property as standard construction is a good indication that mortgage lenders would do the same. But as ever with renovations, as soon as one challenge was overcome, something else stepped up almost literally. The other big challenge was the stairs. The stairs that were here were very small. Uh, even for my little size five feet, and I had to come down like a penguin. But obviously with the amount of work going on, moving rubble, moving rubbish out of the house, that became a, a weaker and weaker set of stairs, eventually breaking, so we had to have them replaced. It probably didn't seem like it when they broke, but I think it's a good thing, as the new stairs will be far easier and far safer to use. But even after all that, Elaine and Brian aren't finished yet. We've still got the side part of the building to do, where the old wash house would have been and the outside toilet. And then exterior, we need to do the garden and level all of that. Eight months in, and with the outbuilding still to do, the work will take a little longer than anticipated, mainly due to their contractors having very busy schedules. But did Elaine manage to stick to her £50,000 budget? We have gone over budget, 
we've gone in at around 62,500, but we're enjoying the fruits of it and just love what's happened to the house. She seems delighted with the results, and quite rightly so, in my humble opinion. But what will a local estate agent think? We've asked along the one that saw it last time to get his thoughts. Oh, uh, the transformation's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, they've done an absolutely spectacular job. It's been modernised. It feels bigger in itself, and that's down to the colours. Um, also, the layout um, just makes the house feel that tiny bit bigger. A ringing endorsement. And who does he think the house would appeal to? So this property would um, appeal to quite a few people, first-time buyers, uh, people looking to upsize with a small family, uh, or potentially investors. Having bought the property for 120 grand at auction and spent 62,500 on the modernisation, what could it be worth on the open market? So in this current market, I believe this uh, property would be worth £230,000. But if they were to do the necessary work to make it a, a standard construction, then the value of this property would be £260,000. Um, we're very happy with what we've done and happy that it has made that kind of profit on what we paid for it and the money we've spent on doing it up. So that's a good, good enough figure. With a current total spend of 182500 and if Elaine is able to get the house officially signed off as standard construction, her and Brian could be looking at a pre-tax profit of 77500 But profit isn't what this project was all about. It was bought to be a home. I absolutely adore it. I... You know, I just walk around the house and see different aspects and, and I just enjoy each room. I'm happy with the way they've turned out. And I think that makes all the hard work worthwhile. I'm in Merseyside now and the city of Liverpool. According to the Office for National Statistics, average house prices in the northwest rose by 12.2% in 2022, the second highest rate in England. So the right property in Liverpool could make for a good investment. And today I'm just south of the city centre in Toxteth. Well, there's lots of positive things going on in the Liverpool property market. This area has got some really good things happening. So, the idea of owning a studio flat here, mm, sounds pretty good, especially one in this amazing historic building. £40,000 was the guide price. Let's have a look. This is a leasehold property inside an old converted warehouse, and first impressions are good. There's a lift for a start. And the communal area is clean and modern. Let's just hope the flat itself doesn't disappoint. Well, now that is a surprise. What a fantastic flat. The first thing you see when you come in here is just the height of the ceiling. It's, it's obviously kept that industrial feel, which I personally love. I mean, the old supports there. I'm loving all the, the trunking with the electrics in it, the fact that you can see the sort of beams and the, uh, the RSJs, the roll steel joists. Yeah, it's, it's pretty funky. This, however, is all a bit strange. Uh, this is a kind of pod they've created in the middle. This is the bathroom and the loo. And why would you do that? Why would you put that in the middle there? Why wouldn't you put it over there in that corner? And the problem you've got is moving it at this point, all the, all the, the drainage and the, the sewer pipe and the whatever else is, is all there. And so to move it over there, given the fact it's a flat and who's downstairs and upstairs, so, bit of a shame, so we're probably gonna have to live with it as it is. The bedroom is over this way. I mean, you can imagine some really funky black and white art on that wall there. I mean, it, it reminds me of the sort of New York loft apartment. It's fantastic. A bit of storage. I mean, this little pod, much as I hate it, it does actually provide some useful, um, useful storage. This is a little cupboard, and then there's more. Because here's the kitchen. I mean, wow. 
Um, I can understand why they've done this. Uh, probably it means that all the electrics and all the, uh, the sewage pipes and everything is sort of vertically above and below us here in the, the building. Um, <sighs> Uh, still don't like it, but but anyway, a good sized kitchen for the size of a studio flat, and uh, it just fits in, I guess, with the whole funky feel. But the one thing you can't deny is the view out the window. That is the Mersey. That is amazing. With views like this, it's a great spot to daydream. But it's just a shame that the windows weren't a little lower than you wouldn't have to stand. There's also good views from the living space on the other side of this studio apartment. Overall, this flat is a fantastic property. No major work is required and the buyer could simply clean it up, decorate it to their own taste and it will be ready to go. So, obviously, when it comes to buying a flat, a couple of other things you want to be thinking about. Number one, uh, the management charge. Well, I've checked that out. Uh, so that's for basically making sure that the communal areas are kept in good condition. Uh, it's £1,200 a year, so that's not too bad. The other thing is the lease. Well, that's good news. It's got 120 years left on that, so nothing too much to worry about. So, basically, what can I say? It's a really funky, well-presented, needs a little bit of work, but, but overall, fantastic studio flat. Time to see what another property expert thinks. We invited one along from the auction house that sold it to get their thoughts and valuations on this funky studio apartment that came with the guide price of £40,000. There are plenty of positives about this apartment. It's in an up-and-coming area, being very close to the city centre, making it ideal for students and professionals to commute into the city. The apartment we're in is in good condition, seems to be taken care of, and it's all been well maintained. So does the expert think there is anything a potential buyer could do to improve on this already very impressive lot? There's currently a unit in the centre of the apartment that houses the bathroom and the kitchen. I personally think this could probably be enhanced slightly just to improve the finish in line with the uh, standard of the property. And what about those all-important numbers? What sort of figures could a buyer expect? Once this apartment is ready for the market, my rental valuation would be £600 per calendar month. But I would envisage the sales valuation would be between £80,000 and £85,000. Hmm. Well, it's a funky flat in an increasingly trendy location. For a good price, if you can get it anything like the guide. Let's see who bought it when it went under the hammer. This lot was sold after a bid was accepted prior to auction. It's yours! Well done. And the successful bid of 48,000 was made by retired nurse Merrill. She lives locally with her wife Dawn and has been looking to invest in property. This is her first purchase. I met up with her to hear her plans for this studio apartment. Meryl, Hi. Good, good to meet you. Yeah, you too. Congratulations. Thank you. So tell me why you wanted to buy this place. Well, we wanted to get somewhere to, uh, to do up and um, saw the building. It's an absolutely beautiful building. Saw that it was on offer, so just by chance came and uh, had a look. A bit of a nosy, really, and right. then um, fell in love with it. Right. And what, do you, what are you buying it for? Um, to sell, to... Um, to, to do up and sell, but in the meantime, my son's going to come and live in it while he's studying. Oh, um, right, so he's studying yeah. locally then? So he's going to... He's come back to Liverpool, yeah, to study, do a Masters. Oh, yeah. right. So this is going to be a student pad? It's going to be a student pad. Wow, yeah. what an amazing place for a student to live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He must be in seventh heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did say he had visions of buying it off me, maybe even when he's finished. OK. You know, to get his yeah. foot on the ladder. So. What was it that you liked about it? Uh, well, I've always loved the building, but um, the view is fantastic. Mm. And um, it just seemed a really good size yeah. as well. A really good size. Yeah, I mean, for a studio flat, I mean, I've been in... I've been in two-bedroom flats smaller than this. Yeah, yeah. And nicely proportioned. The way they've done it is really nice. Funky. I yeah. mean, I, for a student, just it could not be better. A bit yeah. of funky art on the walls, you know, big stereo, if they have those these days. You know, just awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the plans for it, then? What are you going to do to it? So we're just going to really 
enhance that, that what we've got. We're definitely going to do something with what that looks like. It just doesn't feel like it's finished, does it? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So we hopefully are going to think of something a lot more interesting to do, do with it. I haven't quite worked it out yet. Mirrors? Mirrors in the bedroom, maybe. Mirrors all around? Like a, yeah. like a, like a, like a TARDIS. <laughs> Well, it enhanced the size of the room, probably. Yeah, it would. Oh, my son was very keen on that being kind of TV and desk and what have you here. And Ellis will be involved in... My son will be involved okay. in, the, in the putting things where he wants them to be um, and try and think about how we can utilise some of the, the height. Yeah. What, you think of, like, a mezzanine floor or something? A bed or... Well, I don't, I don't think it's quite high enough for no. that. But maybe just utilising... Uh, my hope was maybe even a library kind of up in the... A library? Uh, up nice. high, but that's in my head. Making use... Making something up round near the window so that you can look and see out of the... Uh, right. Out at the river and make use of the view. Um, and just kind of enhance the space that there is. They've painted that a nasty grey. Yeah. So we'll probably, like you say, make it a little bit funkier and a little bit more of its style. What's the time scale? Three to four months, I think. Right. Just with when he'll be ready to come in and when he'll want to, us to be ready. OK. And what yeah. about the budget? We probably won't spend more than 2000 and that'll be making it probably some of the things that we might put in for him as well. And are you going to do the work? Yeah, we'll do, be able to do yeah, everything. Exactly. We'll be able to do everything, yeah. So, from, from your point of view, is this a new venture, the whole property world? Or yeah, not? I retired recently. OK, and, what did you do um, before? I worked for the NHS. Oh, well done. For, Brilliant. Yes, working for people with learned disabilities, adults with learned disabilities. OK. The plan was for us to buy property, me to spend some of my time doing it up. OK. With learning new building skills and learning new skills. So once you've done this one, do you think you might be tempted to do all yeah, this? Yeah, I think we will do, we will do, cos we had really intended on getting something that needed a little bit more work doing, but it seemed too good a place to turn down, really. Yeah, good. Well, you're delighted, then. And your son is delighted, oh, I imagine. Yes, he's as pleased as punch, okay. yeah. Pleased as punch. Good. Well, yeah. congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Good luck sorting it out. I look forward to seeing how you get on. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, I think Meryl has done absolutely great with this place. I can understand why her son would be absolutely delighted. What a student pad this would make. How will she get on enhancing it? You can find out later in the show. Well, we've seen how one property turned out, but there are still two left to see. Hopefully, they will have completed the work, but that's not always the case. All sorts of problems can crop up, so let's see what our two remaining buyers have had to cope with. Let's just take a look. Back now to the West Midlands and the market town of Willenhall, where we first saw this two-bedroom bungalow that was built in 1932. And in recent times, it would be fair to say the years hadn't been kind to it. That is some serious move. There's cracks everywhere in this room. There's more cracks in the corner. Over here, there's even cracks in the back wall as well. Don't like it. And with the bungalow sitting on such a large, deep plot, you had to question whether the building was worth saving. And these were exactly the thoughts of Ian on the right and Dean when the company they worked for bought it for £126,000 at auction. Plan A would be to um, completely knock it down and start again. Flatten it, have a yeah. have a blank canvas, yeah, yeah. empty plot, yeah. OK? Yeah. And then yeah. six one-bed uh, apartments in a muse style. And if you were thinking, oh, just another development project, think again. These apartments were for a very specific purpose. So we, we represent a, a care company across the West Midlands. Uh, who look after young adults with learning difficulties, physical disabilities, Asperger's, autism, that type of thing. So we're looking for community-based accommodation. Ian is the finance manager, and he had hoped to bring in the six apartments for an all-in total of £600,000. And once planning was approved, maintenance manager Dean had hoped it would be ready to go in about a year. But when we first returned, nearly three and a half years later, 
Well, it was just an empty site. But now, over five years since we first saw that dilapidated bungalow, we're back. Wow, so it's up. But what did they end up building? So now we've got four flats, all one bedroom, all got their own um, lounge, bedroom, wet room. Um, There's communal space as well and uh, small office space. As these flats are community-based accommodation for young adults who need extra care and support, they come with extra wide corridors, wet rooms, staff rooms, communal spaces and other requirements needed in shared accommodation buildings. So internally, the block was tailored specifically to make it fit for purpose. And externally, I think we've tried to blend in with the street. It, it is the most modern house now on the street. We're set back from the road. We've got private parking, an electric car charger to keep up with the times. And uh, we're very pleased with how it looks. But with problems getting in some of the utilities, extra foundations needed on the site, and a whole host of other issues, this project has certainly dragged on. But now, apart from a few small jobs, it's just about complete. So the plan will be that the people living here will rent their accommodation and also uh, be provided with care and support services in order to live independent lives in a community-based setting. We have two people waiting to move in uh, as it stands at the moment. There will be a longer list um, of people looking to take advantage of the service when we're fully open. Uh, but we'll be working with those two people over the next few weeks to help them transition and move in to their nice new home. Over the years, the care company Ian and Dean work for has provided similar accommodation for over 200 young adults across the West Midlands. And Dean and Ian have worked together for over 10 years on similar type projects. Because together, there's nothing we can't do. I've kind of overseen the project, um, attending regular site meetings with a contractor, um, just to make sure that things are, are moving and make sure that we get kind of what we, we've asked for. And my role has been to attend the odd site meeting alongside Dean and the main contractor pay the bills, uh, pay the invoices, um, and then manage the contract uh, to see it to, it to its conclusion. And talking of the bills, what did the final tally come to? So the budget um, has inflated somewhat since we started the project. Um, we've had several delays um, due to many unforeseen circumstances. So we've ended up with a final account of £598,000. And along with the £126,000 purchase price, they incurred other expenses along the way, meaning Ian reckons the whole project will come in close to £800,000. So what does a local estate agent think about this building and the four flats contained within it? I've just had a look around the property. Uh, they've just built a full new building. The finishing side is lovely. They've done a great job. Uh, the standard of finish here is perfect. I couldn't fault it. Catering for specific needs, this isn't a sell-on development, but it represents an investment of around £800,000. So is it money well spent? In the current market, this property could sell for £800,000. That's all right. Yeah, I think so. I think that's largely what the building's cost um, over the years that we've owned it. So, yeah, so we'd certainly want our money back. OK, so that's fine at break-even. But the key for these four flats is the revenue they will generate through rental and the care provision that goes with them. Individually, each flat in the current market, you'd be looking at £1,100 per calendar month. Sounds about right, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, we will be including all the services, broadband, uh, utilities, council tax, 
um, access to Dean's team for full maintenance, access to the care and support team. So that yeah, that sounds pretty much on the money. And that represents a 6% yield, which is important to generate income for further projects. But how would Dean and Ian sum up their 14th project together? So it took a bit longer than what we expected. Yeah, taking, what, nearly seven years? Yeah. We were here at the start, we are here at the That's end. That's quite good for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, very pleased, looking forward to the guys moving in. It's been a long time coming, so pleased, pleased that we've got there in the end. Heading back to Merseyside and the city of Liverpool, where I saw a one-bedroom apartment in an old converted warehouse. And despite its modest size, this studio flat was packed with personality. What a fantastic flat! Yeah. Can you feel the yeah. Can you feel the this rather funky lot had a guide price of 40000 and for that you got a small kitchen, a living room with great views and a good-sized bedroom. I mean, you can imagine some really funky black-and-white art on that wall there. I mean, it, it reminds me of the sort of New York loft apartment. The only drawback was an unusual-looking pod in the middle, but other than that, everything was in great condition. When it was sold, it was bought prior to auction by Merrill, a local retired nurse who was looking for her first property to do up, and she negotiated a purchase price of 48000 So tell me why you wanted to buy this place. Just by chance came and uh, had a look, a bit of a nosy, really, and right. then um, fell in love with it. And what, you, what are you buying it for? To sell, but in the meantime, my son's going to come and live in it while he's studying. What an amazing place for a student to live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before Ellis could move in, Merrill planned to redecorate and enhance the character of the flat, as well as utilise the flat's stunning views. She had a budget of £2,000 and was hoping to do the work herself in three to four months, in time for Ellis to start university. So was Merrill able to create the perfect student pad for her son? We've returned just under four months later, and this funky flat has gotten a whole lot funkier. Meryl did all the work here alongside her wife, Dawn. You've done more than I have. Well, being retired, it means that I, uh, I've got the option to do a lot of it, but we have been here of evenings together and weekends together, haven't we? Yeah. But you'd be glad for a little break, <laughs> won't you, love? Very much so, <laughs> yes. No wonder, because they've both been very busy. We wanted to lighten the place up because it was so dark in here with the dark grey and the dark blue walls. It was really dim, wasn't it? Yeah. It was several coats and obviously it's very high and very big. They decided not to opt for any drastic changes to the layout or the pod, as Ellis was happy to keep things as they were. So instead, Meryl and Dawn have freshened everything up and tried to give it a stylish touch whilst keeping an eye on their costs. The thing that we've probably enjoyed together the most is finding little bits, going to antiques places and finding little bits of things that would fit in. Well, we've definitely thought that it would be lovely to sit and eat looking out of the window and how we could use that. So we managed to find um, a table that we could work on to make look nice. And it fitted perfectly. We really wanted to change the the kitchen, the, the cupboard doors mostly because they are a darker grey and we wanted to lighten it up. So, in the end, we changed the door that covers the fridge and bought some disco lights. This project has been a bit of a slow dance, taking nearly four months to complete. But Merrill and Dawn have also been renovating their own home. And they've still been able to finish the work in time for Ellis to start university. The challenges that we've had on the way really have been chasing the people who run the building. Found the man to talk to and so it's OK now. 
We did have a problem with the drain pipe, so they've fixed that. They've been OK, actually. Once we found out who it was who we were talking to, especially as we haven't paid him any money yet, so... <laughs> Once they've been paid, Merrill and Dawn will have spent £1,200 of their original budget of £2,000. They've ended up with £800 in their pocket, as they've done mostly decorative work. The only outside help they've needed was a qualified electrician who repaired some faulty sockets and fixed a couple of electric radiators. Now the work is complete, have their long-term plans for it changed at all? Alice is still going to live in it, and actually, I'd mentioned that we were talking and Dawn had thought that she might want to turn it into an art studio, and uh, he said, oh, that'll be when I leave, <laughs> with a view to probably that not being very soon. Other than that, he, he's not... It's, been, it's going to be a surprise for him when he comes in and sees it all finished. I'm sure he will be delighted with his fantastic student, Pat. What does an expert think, though, of the work carried out on this studio flat? We've invited the expert from the auction house who sold it and saw it on our last visit to get their thoughts. This is the second time visiting the property. I think the owners have done a fantastic job in sprucing the place up. They've done some uh, cosmetic refurbishment to it, um, and it's now in, in good condition. Merrill and Dawn may keep the flat once Ellis has finished university, although they haven't quite decided yet. But if they wanted to go down the rental route, what sort of income could this flat generate? I think this property could rent for somewhere in the region of £650 per calendar month. Even after the annual service charge of £1,200 is factored in, that would give them a very healthy yield of over 13%, so the long-term figures are good. What about its resale value? As Merrill and Dawn have spent a total of £49,200 on their investment. I think this property would sell in the region between £85,000 and £100,000. The only reason I give a range is that it's quite a unique property, so it could be anywhere within that spectrum. That is massively better than we had anticipated, wasn't it? it we is, thought yeah. maybe in the 70s. Yeah. Merrill and Dawn have some great options once Ellis has finished university. Taking the experts' top figure, that could see them with a pre-tax profit of nearly £51,000, effectively doubling their money. This has clearly been a good investment and a great first project. Looking ahead, they would like to take on another renovation, but for now, they're happy to enjoy the new flat and provide Ellis a stylish home to study from. We absolutely love it, and I think the times when I've just looked out the window and gone, look at that, look at that sunset. You never get sick of the sunset here. You never get sick of it. just how it feels now. is so much better. Well, that's another set of property owners who've experienced the highs and the sometimes lows of buying at auction. But there are lots more stories for us to bring you, so make sure you join us for more auction action. In the meantime, head to BBC iPlayer for lots more episodes of Homes Under the Hammer. Just hit the red button now.